Uh, hello everyone, so today I'm going to be doing, I guess it would be a multimedia update because uh, I've not just got uh, movies here, I've also got some books. So uh, basically um, I did one of these, I think uh, it's October, November time, uh, I said I was going to do all the stuff I, I got for Christmas and uh, Stuff I bought, or you know, just before or after Christmas as well. But I had so much stuff that it was going to be a really stupidly long video. I, to, uh, uh, I need to stop spending so much money on this uh, hobby of mine. I'm afraid, but uh, I'm getting better at it. But um, yeah, so in the part, and I kept buying stuff, and and, and <laughs> so it was, by the time uh, it would have be been a really stupidly long video but uh, I've got some things over the past month you uh, that uh, I felt like talking about so I'm uh, gonna do another update and uh, try and do these more regularly I say that every time I never do but I'm gonna try and uh, I also got a new TV recently this is a Hisense Roku 50 inch I my previous TV was a Hisense but it wasn't a very good one I got it second hand it was an older model it wasn't that good and it was 43 inch, this one's bigger and it has more apps and uh, the picture's a little bit better too. Not the best uh, HDR for a 4K TV, it's pretty good for a budget TV, the HDR, but uh, you know, it's not going to be as good as a, an OLED or a QLED or whatever, but I don't have the money for one of those, so you know, this will do. This will do for the moment, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, we also have one downstairs in the living room, so yeah, anyway, I'll start with the 4Ks. Uh, the uh, V for Vendetta. This was in a. Uh, it was in an uh, Amazon had like they were having a lot of stuff on offer, and uh, this was I can't remember how much it was, but it was quite. It was you know reduced in price, and uh, I've never owned a copy of this film. Actually, I've seen it. I saw it on TV about oh, I guess, oh, ten years ago, something like that, and I, I thought it was really good, but uh, and I kept meaning to buy it, but I never did, and the thing I didn't because I got it. Uh, yeah, I got it on 4K. Uh, it's the uh, and uh, apparently it looks really good. Um, this cover on the side and uh, so I think as I noted last time, the uh, studios they're starting to use these. They're not using Amory cases anymore. They're using these. Uh, I don't know what you call them, but uh, they're a different design. All right, so you get the 4K and the Blu-ray, which is exactly the same as the standalone Blu-ray from like I guess 2007. Whenever it was new, so it's uh it doesn't have the new remaster. So if you if you don't if you can't play 4K discs, but you want the uh, remastered uh, the 4K transfer, you know, to watch, uh, you're out of luck, I'm afraid. Uh, so you you uh, it's a shame. Um, I know, I'll just read out the extras. So uh, two hours of bonus features: James McTeague and Lana Wachowski. In conversation, looking back at V for Vendetta, uh, Natalie Portman's audition, V for Vendetta and Masked, the making of with filmmakers and cast, and more. I hate that one. They don't like list everything, they just put some of them and then they say, and more. But uh, yeah. So uh, I don't know if there's any, any of those in new. Well, I guess the, the James McTeague and Lana Wachowski is probably on the 4K because it sounds like a recent extra, but I think all the other ones are just on the Blu ray disc. So. Uh, but apparently that had a decent amount. So next we have uh, one of the best westerns ever made. We have the US 4K release of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly from Kino Video. Um, this is uh, why well, I imported it. It was reduced to about, uh, I think, 18, 19 quid. I thought, well, that's how much it would cost if it came out over here. So I just imported it because you can't get it over here. Um, doesn't have HDR, but it looks really good. It's the best this film ever looked on home video, and it is the um, international theatrical version. There's uh, three versions. There's the original Italian cut, the this the international theatrical version, which was uh, shortened. But Leone Sergio Leone, the director, actually made the edit himself, so he did approve of this edit, and then. For the uh, special edition DVD, there was an extended version which added back in a lot of the uh, scenes from the Italian cut, plus a scene that was in the premiere, the version that was shown in Rome, the premiere in Rome, but 
was in the actual film when it went on general release because they only didn't like it. They put that in, uh, which is really annoying. And uh, I think the international version is the best edit. Um, I think a lot of the, there's a couple of scenes I think are quite interesting, but most of I actually prefer it actually. But uh, going back, I, I think I prefer the shorter version. It's better paced, and uh, apart from a couple of scenes, I don't miss the extra footage. Certainly not the uh, uh, scene from the extended cut that wasn't in the Italian version. Shame the Italian version couldn't be included because, uh, uh, but they do include the scenes as extras. Uh, another problem with the extended version was because it was done years later and it was the film was shot without sound and then dubbed. They got uh, Clint Eastwood and Eli Wallach that come back about forty years later, and you know they sound much older. So when you get to those scenes, it's it's, it's clear them about forty years later, and it just it's very distracting. So I'm glad to have the. Uh, Shortened version. You've got the um, 4K disc and the Blu-ray disc, which is the, it's the same edit. It would have been nice if they'd included the extended cut on the standard Blu-ray, but uh, I guess it was so that uh, people who wanted the the remas the 4K transfer on a Blu-ray because they can't play the 4K disc, which is, is fair enough. Um, I don't know why they couldn't have included the uh, extended cut on a second Blu-ray, but never mind. Um, cost reasons, maybe. As a actually as a reversible cover, this is the cover it came with normally. I switched it to this one because it's the uh, original Italian poster. Which, uh, since it's an Italian film, I thought that would be, uh, you know, yeah. I preferred uh, using the Italian cover because it's an Italian movie. But uh, yeah, so special features wise, you have a audio commentary by film historian Tim Lucas. The extended version had a commentary by I think Christopher Frailing, and uh, it's not on here because obviously it's the shortcut. It's a shame that's not on here, but uh, you can get the um, extended version quite cheap uh, if you want. If you want that version, and it's the one on streaming, so if you want to watch the extended version, it's quite it's easy. It's, it's, so that's I think that's probably why they made this the the, the uh, international version, the one on here, because uh, you can't really get it anymore. Uh, other than this and the old uh, Bare Bones DVD, but uh, <laughs> who wants to watch a, uh, a DVD when you can have a nice 4K remaster? Uh, so, audio commentary by Tim Lucas, Leone's West, making of documentary, El, El Maestro, Ariel Morricone, Morricone, and The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, Parts 1 and 2. So, I guess that's like a, maybe an interview with Ennio Morricone. Uh, the uh, Leone style on Sergio Leone feature it. The Man Who Lost a Civil War, Civil War Documentary, Reconstruction, Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Deleted Scenes, Vignettes, and much more. So it's got all the extras from the special edition DVD, apart from the commentaries, because again, they won't sync with that version. So, yeah, that's probably the best release to own. You might want to get the uh, extended cut just to have that cut of the movie and the commentaries. Uh, I don't think I'd... I don't know if I'll bother... With, Buying that again because, uh, like I say, I don't. I'd much rather watch the shortened version now. And the last of the four Ks, we have the uh, Cornetto trilogy. So Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and The World's End. You'll notice this is in a Blu-ray case, and that's because w I ordered this from the entertainment store. I think it was the entertainment store, and they were selling for thirty quid. So I ordered it, and when it arrived, the four the case was all smashed up. And uh, it's six discs, and the only Six disc case I could find that was the right size was Blu-ray, so kind of annoying, but uh, never mind. At least I was able to get a, another case. Um, I've, I've, I mean, I've seen these films before. I hadn't watched the um, before. I've seen I watched Shaun of the Dead, and uh, I didn't have time to watch all the Hot Fuzz, but I did watch some of it, and I haven't seen The World End on 4K yet. Hot Fuzz doesn't look that great, but uh, I knew that going in because uh, people said that of the three, it looks pretty. The, the, the remaster's not very good, but Children of the Dead looks pretty good, and apparently World's End looks really nice too, so yeah. I feel like these films, I'm not as... Uh, I've only seen The World's End once, um, you know, uh, it's probably the weakest of the three. Hot Fuzz is good, but kind of, I feel like it, um... It is funny, but I think, like, it kind of uh, gets... A bit overcut. I got a bit sick of it for a while because people just kept quoting it and quoting it, and I just got a bit 
sick of it, but uh, ah, it's been a while since I've seen it, and uh, so it'd be nice. To, well, I watched part of it, but it'd be nice to rewatch the whole thing uh, after not having seen it in a while. And uh, Shaun of the Dead's my favourite, and that's the main reason I got this because I wanted this on it on 4K, and you could only get it in the three pack. And I thought, well, uh, the other two films I quite like as well, so you get to. Uh, just the 4K of Shaun of the Dead, the Blu-ray. They're just the standard Blu-rays you get if you buy the, you know, them on their own, uh, which is fine because they looked pretty good for standard Blu-rays and they have all the extras, so Hot Fuzz, 4K Hot Fuzz Blu-ray, uh, which is rated 18 for the extra features. Uh, which, uh, yeah, they're all the films of 15, but like Hot Fuzz, I guess... Oh, it's in 18 on Blu-ray because of extras, I guess. Um, and then The World End, 4K, and Blu-ray. And it's only one where the disc art matches, because the other two, you know, it's different images. But uh, on World's End, they match. So uh, special features, um, as mentioned, but... Um, uh, they've got, like, these... Uh, back in the, the DVD, you know, these were, like always had really good special features like commentaries, deleted scenes, featurettes, loads, of, there's not, they're not really uh, mentioned, didn't really mention too many on the back, but there's, there were loads of extra features um, on there, uh, so if you love extras, you want to get these these films. So yeah, they're worth it, the two or three of the most, uh, I guess, best comedies of the past of this century, or three of the most popular anyway, and they are they are funny, so definitely worth having them. Next we got the Blu-rays. Um, I'll start with the boutique label stuff, and I'll start with one that arrived today in the post. We have Yesterday's Enemy, which is a Hammer film. Ham Hammer films who did the the famous for doing horror movies, but they did other stuff. And this is a it is a Prisoner of War film, I think. And uh, it's not very well known, but apparently it's really good. And this was in the indicator. We're doing these, uh, doing these volume box sets of Hammer films in volumes. I've got volumes one and two. This was in volume three, and I didn't buy volume three because uh, I wasn't interested in all the films. I was interested in this one, but I think the other ones I was a bit iffy on, so I didn't buy it. And it went out. But basically, indicator they do the limited edition, which comes with the booklets. Oh, in this case, it was in a box set. And then when the limited edition sells out, so uh, they put out a standard version, so when the Hammer 1 sold out, uh, they released the films just on their own without the booklet, which is a shame because the booklet's nice, but, you know, it's, at least at least you can buy the film again. And, uh, yeah, so... I haven't seen it but yet, but, uh, like I say, it just arrived, but I'm looking forward to it. So special features you have high def, high definition remaster, original mono audio, which is good because I prefer to watch films with the, the, the original sound mix rather than like a five point one you know surround sound thing. Uh, just because I mean I'd rather see it the way it was when it came out. Yeah. Uh, alternative feature presentations the uncensored uk theatrical version and the us theatrical version with turned down dialogue i guess the americans couldn't handle like uh turned down dialogue i guess like some swearing is like maybe the americans couldn't handle swearing so <laughs> had to be removed uh the guardian interview with val guest the, that's the director uh, which is an art archival audio recording of the celebrated filmmaker in conversation with jonathan rigby at the london film National, the London's National Film Theatre. Jonathan Rigby's written some very good books about Hammer films, and he's done like commentaries on some of them. So yeah, I want to learn about Hammer films. Read some of his books; they're very, very good. Uh, Total War Inside Yesterday's Enemy documentary written and directed by Hammer expert Mark Hearn. Uh, another one who's you know, right, right, writes a lot of books about Hammer. Who's you know wh that are worth checking out. Uh, and uh, narrated by Claire Louise Amos and featuring film historians Alan Barnes and Jonathan Rigby again. Hammer's Women, Edwina Carroll. 
Critic and author Becky Booth on the popular Burmese-born actress. I'm assuming she's in this. They don't mention it, her name on the back, but I assume she's in this if it's, if it's got a threat on her in the thing. Uh, Stephen Laws introduces Yesterday's Enemy, uh, an appreciation by the acclaimed horror author, New Territory, an anal analysis of the film by British film expert Steve Chibnall. Is that Steve Chibnall, the Doctor Who writer? No, no, that's Chris Chibnall. Who writes Doctor Who. Are they related? Is he like is Steve Chibnall Chris Chibnall's brother? So what, if anyone knows uh, if they're related, please put it in the comments because uh, I'd like. To... <laughs> I'm curious now. Uh, Frontline Dispatches, 2018. Second assistant director Hugh Harlow, props and props. Shane Chand, Peter Alcorn recall their time working on the film, the trailer, image gallery. Even improved English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. So you get a lot of stuff on these indicator discs. I mean, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, if you're interested in Hammer films, buy the indicator discs. I mean, I don't think you can get the box sets of one to four. You can get five and six is just come out. But uh, you can get all the films from one to three in standard editions now. I don't think four has been reissued yet. Th those discs have been... I think they're coming out next month. So, but yeah... Definitely uh, worth it getting it, get uh, buying indicated discs because they're always good quality releases. Next, we have a couple of 101 films. We'll start with uh, one, The Deep. This uh, I got this was in five ninety nine in HMV, and it comes with the uh, little. I don't know they still sell these release, but it's a little uh, miniature issue of Cinema Retro about about the making of the film. Nice stuff. Yeah, this is it's a uh, I guess it's an adventure film. It's like they're looking for like treasure. They're in the uh, Bermuda and uh, they find a sunken wreck of a World War Two freighter, and uh, near it they find an ampule of morphine, one of tens of thousands still on board the wrecked ship, uh, which leads the uh, yeah. So it's a treasure. Film, I think. Um, yeah, based on a book by uh, Peter Benchley, who wrote Jaws, and um, it's got Robert Shaw in it as well, and uh, Jacqueline Bazet and Nick Nolte. Uh, sounded like it was uh, quite entertaining and it was cheap, and uh, yeah, that'd be good. Uh, thought it'd be uh, an entertaining watch, so. Uh, interview, so special features, interview with Underwater, art director Terry Ackland Snow, commentary with film critic Ken Ly Kevin Lyons, uh, The Making of the Deep, select scenes from the three-hour special edition. Apparently there was a, when it was shown on TV, they um, added in some, I guess, some deleted scenes and to make it through. That was quite common back in the, the 70s, 80s, was that because uh, the TV networks realised they could make more money if, it, if the the movies had more ad picks, so they would put deleted scenes back into the film and make like three hour long extended versions. Show them on TV, and this has uh, some of them, not all of them. It's a shame that they couldn't include it, all the extra scenes or, or even the full TV cut. I don't know why. Uh, Cinema Retro, I mentioned that Cinema Retro mini magazine, the deep focus in film. Yeah, so be good. Uh, and uh, yeah, apparently uh, the uh, thing most people remember about this is uh, Jacqueline Bizet, uh in a wet t-shirt because she is, you see her on the front, she swims. I don't know what she wears, a t-shirt. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so probably quite fondly remembered by a lot of uh, adolescents from who saw it <laughs> back in 77. Next we have another 101 films. We have uh, Split Second. This is the second release of Split Second. Uh, the, they released it, I think, a, like a sta oh, like a one disc Blu-ray, like a few years ago, and then the more recently they released this, one of their black label releases, which is two discs. And uh, this is the step and one. Originally, the black labels came out. They came in these sort of hard boxes with little booklets and the case, and this just comes in the case. I guess the hard box and the booklet are sold out. Uh, that's fine, you get all the discs. 
You have two discs, because there's two cuts to the film, I think. Disc one featuring commentary and disc two special features. So it's um basically it's Rutger Hauer. It's a, he's like a um it's set in London in a dystopian future and there's like a uh serial killer. Rutger Hauer's like a, a, a maverick cop who's looking for a serial killer. So um yeah, it's sort of a B movie thing, but it looked again it looks quite I thought it looked quite interesting. So, uh, special features, brand new extras, HD presentation of the film in the original aspect ratio, uh, scanned in 4K, uh, audio commentary by uh, film historian Mike Leader and filmmaker on Venema. They've, uh, they've been doing a lot of commentaries on the uh, Hong Kong martial arts films that Eureka have been putting out, so their commentaries are quite interesting, so I'll have to listen to that when I've seen the film. Great Big Bloody Guns, producer Laura Gregory and Al actor Alistair, brackets Neil Duncan. It's, um, I think he's, his name's Alistair Duncan, but he was credited at, no, he's credited as uh, Alistair Duncan in the film, but now I think he's called, like, his name, stage name now is Neil Duncan, so that's why there. Uh, Call Me Mr. Snips, an interview with composer Stephen W. Parsons, Stay in Line, an interview with line producer Laurie Borg, More Blood, an interview with Creature effects designer Cliff Wallace, shoot everything, an interview with uh, cinematographer Clive Tickner, newly commissioned artwork by Keith Robinson, additional extras, I'm guessing these are on the, the uh, um, it doesn't say which this are on, but there's uh, additional extras, I'm guessing they're like older special features they've put it over. So the original 1992 making of featurette, uh, original 1992 behind the scenes feature, with uh, featuring special effects creator Stephen Norrington and the cast and crew. Stephen Norrington, for those of you who did the special effects on this, he went on to direct uh, Blade and The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And that was it, particularly that kind of killed his career. Um, he hasn't directed anything since, which is a shame because, um, like, he was, was. Blade was quite a well directed film, so. Um, split second, the Japanese cut, that's what I was thinking of. Uh, Full frame with burnt in Japanese subtitles, SD. So it's like a, I guess the, the Japanese version is different and uh, it's a st standard def copy with burnt in subtitles, I guess. Maybe they don't have the original film of it, but you know, it's a, I guess it's more of a curio than like a, you know, thing. And deleted scenes on the Japanese cut. So if you, if you just want to see the extra scenes, but you know, without having to sit through the whole Japanese cut, you can. Which is good. Uh, seven promotional TV clips, US home video promo, and the theatrical trailer. So, a lot of a uh, lot of cool extras on that. So even if I don't like the film, I'm sure it'll be worth uh, you know worth going through all the extras. That's why I like these boutique label releases because they put even if the film's not the best, they always put effort into the release, giving you the best release possible for fans. So that's why I kind of like. Try to support the boutique labels just for that reason. Next, we have Eureka. Uh, first, we have a Masters of Cinema from Eureka. We have one of my favorite films ever, The Spy Who Came In from the Cold with Richard Burton. This is a John Le Carre. It's based on a John Le Carre novel, and Richard Burton plays a basically an English spy. He goes into um, uh, he's on a dangerous mission in he's uh, in East Germany. Really, very good film. Very, very good film. Do give it a watch if you like spy thrillers. So this is the first pressing. So it has a slipcase and uh, cover. It's a reversible cover. Um, on the inside is the same as the. Uh, I think this is the the one that came in, but the same as you can have it as the same as the slip cover. Or this artwork. I use this artwork because uh, I've already got this one on the slip cover. So, if I have this one out, I can have both of them displayed. Uh, also comes with a booklet. What kind of annoys me about Eureka is they've moved to using like the, the um, these size cases instead of the um, these ones, which they used to use. But they've kept the booklets the same size, so the booklets. You know, they they only go so far. It's like 
why not just make the booklet taller? You know, it's kind of a, bit of a nitpick, but it kind of annoys me. There's the the disc. So, um, special features, uh, 1080p restoration, again, uncompressed uh, LPCM stereo audio. I thought this film was would have been made in mono. I guess it is. It is a stereo mono, I think. I'm not sure. I guess stereo. I know the DVD had a 5.1 track, so I wonder if it's just a sound mix of that instead of the original sound mix. I have no idea. Uh, optional English subtitles. Brand new audio commentary with film scholar Adrian Martin, Cold Light, brand new video essay by critic and filmmaker David Carnes, plus booklet. So yeah, this is the same, I believe it's the same video transfer as the Criterion. The extras are different, but you get the same picture quality, so if you, you can't play the Criterion because uh, you live in Region B land, this is a good uh, alternative. I never did buy the Criterion, I meant to, but Criterions are expensive. Anyway buying them here. Importing them is really expensive, so um, <laughs> I never really get around to importing them, but uh, good thing I didn't, because i got a Master of Cinema version now. Next we have, these two are, um, they're not Masters of Cinema, I believe they're Eureka Classics, which is fine. Basically, um, they're, they're basically similar releases, but they're not part of the Master of Cinema but, uh, line, but it's the same level of quality, so. The One-Armed Boxer, with uh, Jimmy Wang Yu, basically he's a, he's a martial artist and after curing the wrath of a local gang leader he's attacked by a team of deadly mercenaries and has his right arm violently severed. And he has to learn the, um, has to train his remaining arm to be stronger than ever and goes on a rip-roaring rampage of revenge. This is really entertaining, it's um, apparently when it came out it was quite uh, innovative. Like this, this, the whole, the story hadn't really been that sounds, story sounds quite cliche now, but at the time it hadn't really been done so much, but it's been ripped off so many times that it comes, but it's, really, it's cliche to the point where it feels like you're watching parody. But the fight scenes are really, I mean, they're quite primitive by today's standards, but they are quite entertaining. And, uh, yeah. Good, good, cheesy fun, I would say. And uh, it actually comes with, so you take the slip cover off, and it actually comes with a fold-out poster. Uh... Basically, one side is this, and one side is that. <laughs> Safe. I don't think I have room for the whole thing. And again, you have the booklet, the disc, and the reversible artwork, which again, one side's the, what's on the slip cover, one side's the original poster art. Uh, yeah, I had, a, I had a blast watching this. I would uh, definitely, if you like Kung Fu films, I would recommend this, because it's one of the... Uh, the, the the classics. So special edition, you got a, a slip cover with the reversible poster, 1080p presentation, uh, original Mandarin and English audio options. If you uh, alternative Mandarin soundtrack, here's a thing like um, the original Mandarin audio. You see, it's something you know about uh, Hong Kong film industry. They don't care about copyright, or at least they didn't back then. So if you watch the original Mandarin audio, the during the opening titles they play the theme tune from Shaft, <laughs> which is great. Like the alternate Mandarin and the English, don't have to use another piece of music. But if you listen to the original Mandarin, it has the Shaft theme in it, which is so yeah, definitely watch it with that audio track. I mean, obviously it's the original too, you know, so you want to hear it in the original language, but also um, you get the Shaft theme. Uh, optional English subtitles, feature length audio commentary by Asian film expert Frank Dijing. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Stills Galleries trailer. The Chinese Professionals TV spot. The Chinese Professionals was the American title, I think, and it's basically a TV spot with the you, the American uh, TV promos. Uh, plus booklet. So, yeah. Next, we have another Hong Kong martial arts film by. Uh, Directed by and starring one of my favourite uh, Hong Kong martial arts stars, we have uh, Encounters of the Spooky Encounter of the Spooky Kind by Sammo Hung, and starring Sammo Hung. Uh, yeah, really good film. It's a bit like uh, Evil Dead crossed with a kung fu film. If you haven't seen it, it's uh... yeah. So slipcover, and again, double-sided poster. 
this one doesn't have a a um, reversible artwork inside. It just has a picture. The same. Um, yeah, I had the Hong Kong Legends DVD. This um, took me ages to find it, and I eventually found it. And uh, then when I found out this was coming, I uh, I sold it because uh, you know I want it in HD. So is this is. Uh, so this one's double sided poster again and the original. I don't know why I didn't have that as the reverse oh, on the, the the cover. Never mind. So, um, yeah, so it's like a horror comedy. Like I say, like Evil Dead, but with kung fu vampires in it. Uh, so, a special edition, rest, brand new restoration, Cantonese audio, the original mono presentation. Alternate Cantonese audio, the home video mix. I don't know what the differences are. I wonder if it's the same thing where like they had to change the music because they're copyright. Um, English dubbed audio, the classic dub from the original film's in original release. English dubbed audio, modern dub credit for the film's later re-release, which I guess was the one on the Hong Kong Legends DVD. Optional English subtitles, brand new feature length audio commentary by Asian film expert Frank Dijing again. Uh, archival interview with Sammo Hung, alternate English opening and closing credits, Stills Gallery, and the original Hong Kong theatrical trailer. So, yeah. Very, very entertaining film. Uh, again, if you love Kung Fu films, I recommend watching this, although it's very, very... Um, again, something else you need to learn about Hong Kong films is they do not care about political correctness. Political correctness at all, especially back then. And Samo's films are very, uh, when they come to the portrayal of women, his films are pretty um, <laughs> misogynistic, for want of a better word. Uh, I'm not saying, that, I mean, it's just a product of the culture and the time it was made in, but yeah, if, when you watch a film, it, it is a pretty shockingly sexist. Uh, you know, so just keep that in mind when you watch it. It was made in a different culture 40 years ago. So now we're on to just, uh, I guess, regular race Blu rays. We have a um, film I've never seen, a Shout Shout at the Devil, which is an adventure movie starring Roger Moore and Lee Marvin. And I just bought about that based on the cast alone, because, uh, you know, of those two. Roger Moore, I still, he's my favourite Bond when I was a kid, but I've got an awful lot of his Bond films, but I still like him in a lot of stuff. It's more the. The films themselves, I think, are a bit crap, but I don't mind him so much. First ever release of the uncut 235 to 1 theatrical version. That's a lie. Uh, it is the uncut theatrical version, but the film on this disc apparently isn't the 235 ratio. It's just standard 16 by 9. So the cover is lying, but. Um, and get it in the proper ratio in, I think, in America, I think, at least. But um, I thought, well, I'll get this and then I can watch it. And if I like it, I can import the, I can import, see if I can import a, a version in the proper ratio. And if not, if I don't like it, I can just sell it on. So yeah, no harm done. And it's got some... But it is apparently remastered and does look quite nice apart from the fact that it's in the wrong ratio. And it has some decent extras. So it's got an image gallery, Roger Moore's career, A Matter of Class. A Matter of Class, which is a documentary about Roger Moore's career. Which is part of the reason why I got this, because that would be an interesting watch, because you know, he was in a lot of stuff. The original theatrical trailer and classic movie previews. So looking forward to watching this. Sounds like something I would like. Just a shame about the um, it not being in the right ratio. Despite what other tells you. Yeah, screen bound, you need to sort your sort yourselves out. Next, uh, Legend, Ridley Scott. Uh this is the UK release, so it has the European version in the director's cut. For those of you who don't know, this is a fantasy film by Ridley Scott. It's got Tom Cruise in it before he was I guess was this before Top Gun? 85, I guess it was, but um, basically, so it was originally, it was scored by Jerry Goldsmith, and that was the version that came out in Europe. Then there was a test screening, it was released in internationally by Fox and in the States by Universal, 
and there was a test screening of the European cut in America. And the audience, it was like teenagers, I guess, and the audience didn't really like it. So the head of Universal basically said to Ridley Scott, do you think maybe we should recut it and do music again? And Ridley Scott said yes. So when it came out in America, it was it was a shortened edit of the movie and it had a different, completely different musical score by Tangerine Dream, the synth group. So for the, this film has two completely different scores. And it was I think it was I guess it was until it was released on DVD in the States when they released not the European cut, Ridley Scott's director's cut, which is basically the European version but longer. You know, like an extended version of that. And uh, it was a two disc DVD that came out in America and it had both cuts, the director's cut and the theatrical cut. And uh, this is the being the UK version, it doesn't have the Tangerine Dream version, it has the the European version plus well it says director's cut just on the back which makes it sound like that's the only version on here but it has I put the disc in it has both so yeah which is fine because the being a Brit this is the only version of, I've only seen the European cut so I'm not that bothered about not having the Tangerine Dream score which honestly I don't think a synth score would really work well in a fantasy film but then again there's a lot of people who grew up with the American cut who you know refuse who don't like the Jerry Goldsmith's go, so I don't know, but yeah. Good film, very style over substance, but it looks beautiful. And uh, Tim Curry plays uh, Darkness. His character is basically like a big, you can see he's basically the devil. And uh, yeah, he's, it's, it's worth watching the film just for him because he's really good and the makeup is excellent. So yeah. No extras on the UK disc apart from the director's cut. The American disc has like uh, more extras, but. Universal put that out, Fox put this out, so... Apparently there's an Arrow version by Arrow Video coming out, but I have a suspicion it's only going to come out in America because, you know, two different distributors, you know, the world Universal, I would, you know, Arrow have worked with them before. Fox is now owned by Disney, and I don't think they'd be licensing their films out to a boutique label in the, you know, at least over here. So, yeah, this is probably the only version we're going to get in the UK. And like I say, I'm not that bothered about the Tangerine Dream score, so I'm not that bothered if, you know, I don't get... I can't, you know, the Arrow, because I'm assuming Arrow will have all three versions, so I'm not that bothered if we don't get it. I'm too cheap to import it, so... Yeah. Legend worth a watch. Next week, speaking of Ridley Scott, we have uh, Prometheus. This is the Blu-ray. Plus digital copy. doesn't have the digital copy anymore. No, it's just a leaflet. I never use digital copies anyway. Um, I hate this film, but I'm trying to get all the Alien films on Blu-ray or 4K. I have the first one on 4K and Aliens, Alien 3 and Resurrection on Blu-ray. And uh, I do want to pick up Covenant on 4K because I quite like that one when I saw it in the cinema. This was, I was going to get this one on 4K, because even though it's a crap film, it probably looked really nice, but uh, it was one ninety nine in a charity shop, and I thought, you know what, I'm only buying it for the per just to have all the Alien films, so it doesn't really matter if I've don't have if I, if I've only got it on standard Blu-ray, because I'm not really going to watch it. So, yeah. Special features, commentary by Ridley Scott, commentary by writer John date and write a date slash executive producer Damon Lindelof yeah. uh, <laughs> and the Peter Whalen files uh, the 3D version of this had a had the, it came with a 3D and this disc and then a bonus disc which had really good making of documentaries but again don't like the film so I don't care uh, yeah, this. next we have uh, got this in the Poundland we have uh, Bridesmaids. Uh, never seen this. And it was really funny, though. So it's really funny. So I thought, oh, for two quid, I'll get it. And yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Um, uh, I don't mind uh, the odd chick flick. Like, uh, I'm not, I'm not, pretty even if I'm not part of a film's target audience, if it's a good film, I'll I'll enjoy it. I don't. I'm not. I, you know. There and 
yeah, like I say, I heard this was really funny. Even though it has Melissa McCarthy in, who is not funny, but apparently she's quite funny in this. So, And uh, Kirsten Wiggs. I like Kirsten Wiggs. She's, she's really funny in a lot of stuff. So, um, basically it's about, uh, I guess, uh, Kirsten Wiggs, her best friend's getting married, and she's the... Uh, um, Waving a uh, way in over her head, but determined to succeed, she leads a hilarious ensemble of bridesmaids on a wild ride down the road to the big event. So, yeah, it's and uh, all reviews say it's a bit like a female version of The Hangover. So, yeah, yeah. never saw The Hangover either. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so extra features, so Maid of Honor, behind the scenes feature, deleted scenes, extended and alternate scenes, gag reel, pulled on full song performance. Linearama, Drunkarama, a feature length commentary with the filmmakers and cast, and much more. And I believe it has. I don't think it mentions it on the app, but I think it has two cuts of the movie, like the theatrical cut and an extended cut. Uh, if you've seen this, let me know which cuts better. And uh, hold on a minute, actually, I forgot something. From the, another one I got from the same pound shop on the same day. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Zootropolis, uh, the Disney film. Uh, my sister has this on DVD, and I watched it with her, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so when I saw it in the pound shop, I thought, oh, I'll get that. Yeah, it was a funny film. Uh, I mean, the the actual title of the film is Zootopia. That's what it was called in America. But for some reason over here, they called it Zootropolis. Which, honestly, I kind of prefer because uh, it's, it's a metropolitan city. Metropolis. Zootropolis. Is more fitting, I think, but uh, I don't know why they had to change it. Um, yeah, very, very funny. Kind of a buddy cop film, but with uh, talking animals. Uh, so, special features research, a true life adventure, the origin of uh, an animal tale, zoology, the round tables, Scotopia, ZPD, uh, forensic files, try anything. Music video by Shakira, deleted characters and deleted scenes. So yeah, definitely worth two quid. Worth more than two quid, really. But um, I got it so cheap. I don't know why this, why they'd be selling like a big Disney like because that was a pretty popular movie. So I don't know why they would be selling it in Disney. Would be they'd be selling Disney films in the pound shop. But uh, I guess because physical media sales are declining, um, they just want to get rid of them, which is good for me because it means I can buy them cheap and uh, yeah. Next we have another, uh, I guess this is another rom-com uh, I got from CEX, Crazy Stupid Love, um, it's got it's got a good cast in it, uh, Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling, Julianne Moore, Emma Stone, Marissa Tomei, Kevin Bacon, so yeah, I heard it was really good also, and uh, again I'm not, you know, this doesn't matter whether it's you know, a chick flick or a children's film or whatever, if it's a good film I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy it. And it's a uh, dual format, so it has the Blu-ray and the DVD. Don't really need the DVD though, but uh, I guess nice to have. Um, so yeah, another. I haven't seen this either, but I'm looking forward to it. So special features on Blu-ray. Stephen Ryan walk into a bar. Um, this is basically Steve Carell and uh, Ryan Gosling talking about their roles. In the film, the player meets his match. Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. It's them talking. It's Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone talking in that one. And deleted scenes. So not a lot, but... Uh, never mind. I mean, I don't watch special features that much. Unless it's like a boutique label and it's a film I really like. Uh, or something. You know, it's like where there's a lot. I'll watch them. But generally, I don't... I don't always have the time. So it really has to be a film I love. And it has to be like some really good... You know, a really good special feature for me to sit and watch it. Next we have um, an, a film. I used to own this on Blue. It was this, not this same edition. Not this exact copy, I assume, but it was th this edition of the film. And uh, I sold it because I thought, ah, it's not, f yeah, it's one of those films where it's like, you watch it a couple of times, you don't need to watch it again, but then... Recently, I had the urge to rewatch it, and uh, the Blu-ray is now out of print, so it's quite hard to find. 
And someone was selling it at the car boot fair for two, three pounds or something. So I was like, I snapped that up. And uh case isn't in the best condition, but uh, it's <laughs> three quid for an out-of-print title. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that. We have the Ultimate Edition of Stargate, uh, the movie uh, with James Spader and Kurt Russell. I used to watch SG-1 with my dad sometimes. I haven't seen it in about 20 years, but uh, yeah, the film's pretty good, though. Uh, although it gets forgotten about because the TV series is more popular. But, yeah, um, Not a great film, but it's good, good, solid, entertaining popcorn film, I think. And uh, the best thing about the Ultimate Edition is it has the theatrical and the extended cuts on it. It's good. So I think the uh, um, I think the the old DVDs only had the extended cut. Because if you're going to if you're going to in include if if there's a film with multiple cuts, I think they should always include them all, just so people can choose which one. You know, if someone prefers one over the other, they can pick one they prefer. I really hate it when they just have one version, and it's like, well, why can't you just give me the choice? Uh, the same with Legend, like, they include the director's cut and the European cut. Not the Tangerine Dream cut, which I like, but, but it would have been nice if, you know, you could have included all three. Uh, uh, compare them. Uh, so, um... Obviously, it has both cuts, Star Great, Gate, History Made New, Deciphering the Gate, Featurette, uh, Opening the Gate, Making the Movie Featurette, Passing Through the Gate, Featurette, um, New, Never Both Seen, Gag Reel, Picture in Picture, Ultimate Stargate Knowledge, Is There a Stargate Featurette, Making of Stargate Documentary, Audio Commentary with Writer Director Roland Emmerich and Writer Director Dean Diplin. Yeah, this is probably Roland Emmerich's best film. I mean, I haven't seen Universal Soldier and. Uh, Independence Day is pretty good, but uh, I think I like this more. Uh, there's other films that are a bit crap, though. Although I do... Uh, Godzilla's a bit of a guilty pleasure for me, because I saw it when I was a kid. When I was very young, and I quite enjoyed it. A new English 7.1 DTS Master Audio. Uh, original Stargate previews, B-roll footage, and BD Live. So yeah, you get... The only criticism I have is there's no subtitles. Not that I need subtitles, but it's just... You know, less people can buy it because uh, some people some people do need subtitles, and now they, they can't buy the film if there's no subtitles. It's a shame. And we have the last Blu-ray. Um, at this to last because it's uh, in a DVD size case, so it bridges the link between the DVDs and the Blu-rays. The Sound of Music. Would you believe I've never seen this all the way through? I've seen bits of it, but not the whole film. Yeah. Now, this is the 45, 45th anniversary edition. It includes Blu-ray and DVD and Blu-ray. It basically is in dvd size case. You'll notice I don't have the DVD anymore because it was in a three-disc case with the tray and that was broken, I think. And so I needed to put it in another case. And I didn't. I only had a two-disc case and have a three-disc case. And the DVD was pretty scratched up anyway. And I thought, well, I'm not going to watch the DVD because I have more than one Blu-ray player. So it's not like, I, you know, if my Blu-ray player dies, I can't watch the Blu-ray copy. So um, I just binned the DVD because it wouldn't have played anyway. So, um, yeah. Um, so three to set, well, <laughs> there. So uh, the, the DVD contained the uh, newly remastered picture and audio, optional sing-along track, uh, music, machine, sing along, the sound of music, uh, to our living story. Um, obviously, I can't watch those because I don't have the DVD anymore. But uh, the Blu-ray has feature film and special features. Feature film remastered in there. Uh, high def, your favorite things, interactive celebration, all new immersive viewing experience with behind-the-scenes images, on-screen lyrics, trivia track, and the dating quiz. Music machine, sing along, the audio commentaries with Julie Andrews, Crystal Plummer, and Robert Wise, BD Live. Um, musical stages, creating the sound of music, and all new interactive. This is on the second disc, I think. Uh, interactive backlog tour with in depth featurettes on songs, the, the songs, the stage show, and the movie, the, the film, and sound restoration, and the real life on Trap Family, uh, City of Song, virtual map of filming locations in Stolzburg, Austria. Vintage Rogers and Hannah Stein and the Sound of Music program, screen tests, rare treasures, interviews, photo galleries, and more. I wish they would just list all the extras instead of just saying and more. But yeah. 
So looking forward to finally watching this all the way through. Next we have another musical, uh, Fiddler on the Roof. This is the two disc special edition DVD. This film is on Blu-ray, but I didn't buy it for a specific reason. So uh, basically, I use a there's a uh, rent DVD rental mail order website called Cinema Paradiso, and basically you um, sign up and you rent you know, discs. And I rented Fiddler on the Roof, and I really enjoyed it, but the Blu-ray had an issue with the sound. The sound went out of sync in a few places. And uh, it was really, really d obvious, like distractingly bad. So I thought, well, yeah, the picture quality is nice on the Blu-ray, but I can't stand the sound being out of sync. So I just got the DVD. And uh, it doesn't look too bad for a DVD. So it's fine. It's got all the extras. Uh, uh, basically, it's about a Jewish... Jewish family in the turn of the century, Tsarist Russia. Yeah, uh, it's very Jewish. A lot of it's because the main characters are Jewish, and there's a lot of uh, the themes like Jewish identity in that. And uh, yeah, very good film. Won a did it win Best Picture or no? It was nominated for uh, uh, no it won um, supporting actor I think for uh, Leonard Frey who plays. Um, Son in law. Uh, cinematography. Um, oh no, he didn't win. So, it won for cinematography or uh, sound and uh, best music, music ad adaptation of music from another source. So, John Williams did the, didn't write the music because it was a stage play, but he adapted it for the film. And uh, yeah. Yeah, really good. If you like musicals, give it a watch. Uh, Special Features got a commentary. Uh, Documentary about Noam, Noam Jewison, the director. Noam Jewison looks back, deleted song, Any Day Now, Treve's Dream sequence in full colour, because it's in like a desaturated black and white look in the film. Uh, Trevier, not Trevier. Tre Character's name is pronounced Trevier. Trevier, oh, I forget to pronounce it, sorry. Um, the stories of Shalom Akim. Basically, it's the author of these, the Trevier, Treverier stories were what inspired the film. And it's like, a, a, I think it's Noam Jewison reading them, I believe. Uh, Easter egg, historical background with photographs by Anne Weiss. Storyboard to film comparison, the trailer, uh, vintage trailers and TV spots and archive photo galleries. So, yeah, worth a watch. Just make sure you get the DVD, because like I say, the Blu-ray is out of sync. Next we have another Hong Kong classic, Better Tomorrow. This is the one-disc edition from Optimum. There was a two-disc DVD, which I used to have. It came in a steelbook, this is just the first disc. Um, basically, I had this, and I sold it because, um, one, this is the version where, the infamously, they use music from, like I think, Forrest Gump and Speed. I like replaced some of the score with music from Forrest Gump and Speed and other Hollywood movies. It was really annoying. And also because there's been a lot of Hong Kong films coming out on Blu-ray from Eureka and 88 Films, I thought, oh, well, surely they're going to release this eventually, so I'll just sell it. And um, then I found out that uh, apparently the company that made this, and a lot of John Woo's Hong Kong films, Golden Princess, they're now an insurance company. And they have no interest in, like, letting anyone, you know, like, license their film archive. They don't care about their film archive. They're, uh, you know, they, they're not a film company anymore. They don't care. So this is never going to come out on Blu-ray outside of Asia because I think Fortune Star has the rights in Asia. But it's never going to come out. It's never going to be on a streaming service or on Blu-ray or anything outside of Asia. So if you if you live outside of, you know, China... And you want a copy of this one, you have to buy an old DVD. So I bought this, and Amazon was actually selling this, the one disc version, brand new for four quid. So I bought it just to have it, because uh, even though it's got the, the old score in that, it's you're not gonna you're not gonna get a better version, unfortunately. There wasn't there was an older DVD release which had the original audio, but it was non anamorphic, and the picture quality was really bad, and the subtitles were burnt into the image. So this is. This is better quality, even though it has... I mean, the picture quality on this isn't great either, but, you know, it's better than that. And uh, 
even though it has the wrong music. But at least I can still watch it, and at least it's watchable. So, yeah, and uh, being the one disc version, the only extra is a trailer and an audio commentary by Bay Logan. A lot of his, he used to do a lot of audio commentaries with like Hong Kong films on the Hong Kong Legends label, but a lot of his commentaries aren't included on the like the Eureka, like Blu rays and that, um, because he's a bit of a persona and grata at the moment because he was, uh, he worked for Weinstein for a while and allegedly he was a bit of a sex pest too. So, yeah. So, <laughs> um, which is a shame because his commentaries were very informative, although he, was, he always came across like he was very full of himself to me. Um, even though the information was very good, he always came across very egotistical. So, I always had mixed feelings on him, in the, um, to be honest. So, uh, but yeah, a better tomorrow. Next we have uh, a horror film called The Changeling. But this is really good. I was interested in watching it. It's quite scary. There is a Blu-ray. This is from Studio Canal Optimum again. Uh, well, Studio Canal. Now, they used to be called Optimum. Yeah. Optimum used to distribute Studio Canal titles in the UK, but now they've, they've just been folded into Studio Canal. So, it's just Studio Canal. Um... There is a Blu-ray of this from, I think, Second Sight. And apparently it's really nice. It's got transferring extra features, but there's some issues with the sound again. The 5.1 is missing some a couple of lines, and the mono track, eh, or stereo, whichever one it is, two, whichever, whatever the original audio is, is out of sync. So again, it's like, well, I don't want... A, don't want the miss. I don't want to be either watching it with the lines missing or the sound out of sync. So I just want to put the DVD because uh, apparently the sound on this is fine. So yeah, it's uh, George C. Scott and it's a uh, is it a haunted house film? It's uh, I think it's like a, yeah, I think it's like a haunted house film. Um, yeah, I heard it was quite scary. So and I like George C. Scott. He's a really he was a really good actor in Patton and. Uh, Hustler and you know, loads of stuff, and his version of a Christmas Carol is really good. I watch that every other year. Every year at Christmas, I watch either the Alice Sim or George C. E. Scott Christmas Carol versions. I alternate each year because it's the same story, so I watch them back to back. A bit pointless. So I watch one one year, and then the next year I'll watch the other one. I think uh, I think I watched the George C. E. Scott one last year, so it'll be Alice Sim this Christmas. Yeah, no extras on that, but. Uh, at least, at least the sound isn't messed up. Next we have... I got this at the same car boot fair. The, this next lot of DVDs I got at the same car boot fair as Stargate. Uh, Splash, the uh, Tom Hanks film. Falls in with a mermaid. Uh, I got this because... I don't have Disney+, Plus, but... Um, apparently the version on Disney+, Plus is censored. There's some shots where you saw Daryl Hannah, who plays the mermaid, behind, and they've been censored. And I don't have Disney Plus, but we're thinking of getting it. And uh, I thought, well, if I want to watch Splash, I'd rather have it uncut, so uncensored. So I got the DVD. And it was still in the plastic wrapping, so it was brand new. I mean, I've opened it now, but it was brand new when I bought it. And it was like a couple of quid, so. Yep, definitely a bargain. Is this out of print? It might be out of print, too. I'm not sure, but. Uh, yeah. So, uh, audio commentary by, so special features, audio commentary, Tom Hanks audition, Daryl Hannah audition, making a splash. So, yeah, worth having just to have the the proper version of the movie and not the edited version you get on Disney+. Plus. Uh, and then we have a, this is a trilogy of films. I've not seen them, but they're very highly regarded. And uh, someone was selling the three of them. I mean, they, they were separate, but selling them. Uh, and uh, so I got them. So you have the Three Colours trilogy, uh, which is you've got Three Colours Blue, Three Colours White, and final one, Three Colours Red. They're basically a... Is that French? I think they're French. France, Switzerland, Poland. Okay. So it's a co-production. Well, the first one's French, but the other ones say they're Fre French, Switzerland, Polish productions. I don't know. They're in French. It's... But yeah, so they're sort of a, it's a trilogy of films. I think they're like a, 
Uh, they exposed the French revolutionary ideals of freedom, equality, and brotherhood. A landmark of world cinema. And I don't know much about them other than they're meant to be very good. And uh, someone was selling them for like, I think they were 50p each. So 150 for the whole trilogy. I mean, I would have preferred, they are on Blu-ray. And I would have preferred the Blu-ray box set, but 150 each, yeah, you, at least I can watch them. Um, so special features, Blue has... Chris, uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce the director's name. Uh, but uh, it's a masterclass from him. Interviews with some of the act with the uh, Juliet Brun show, the um, the editor and the producer. Excerpt on the original soundtrack and the trailer. Uh, White has um, the masterclass. I don't know if it's the same masterclass. Might be. Uh, interview with Julie Depley and the producer. Uh, interviews with Julie Depley and the producer. Making of documentary. Excerpt on the original soundtrack and the trailer. Uh, again, the masterclass on the director interviews with. Oh wait, no, this is the first one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so again, masterclass. Uh, Red in Cannes featurette interviews with Irene Jacob, the editor and the producer. Uh, making of documentary excerpt from the original soundtrack and the trailer. So, yeah, glad that I can finally um finally watch these. Uh, I've heard really good things about them. And the last DVD, this. I got this at CEX, actually, not the car boot fair. So this is a title that's out of print. You can't get it anymore. And CEX are selling this. This is the DVD. There is a Blu-ray, but the Blu-ray is really expensive. But CEX had the DVD for £2 for an out-of-print title. We have the two-disc special edition of Near Dark, which is a vampire film from Catherine Bigelow. I hadn't seen it. I have seen it since. It is a very good film. Definitely worth watching if you can get your hands on a copy. Um, as a booklet and the case. This is a Scavano case. This isn't the case it came in originally. Um, the case it came in was broken. I just bought this. I bought this because it was the cheapest clear case because it has. Uh, I wanted a clear case because it has artwork underneath. Um, this is the cheapest two disc clear case I could get that had um, a little thing to hold the booklet. So, yeah, really good films about this guy. He, um, he meets a girl and they really like each other. And, uh, and she's a vampire and she bites him and then he ends up as part of this the group. She's part of this sort of group of vampires. And uh, they sort of basically sort of kidnap him because, uh, you know, he's uh, <laughs> don't want him spilling the beans or anything. And, uh, yeah, it's a really good film. Catherine Bigelow is a really good director. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is the two disc special edition. Uh, so disc one has the commentary with Catherine Bigelow. Um, disc two has a documentary, making of documentary, delete scene, including commentary with Catherine Bigelow. Uh, trailers, storyboards, poster, and stills gallery, behind the scenes, still gallery, talent bios, and some DVD ROM crap, which you can't play anymore because I don't think I think it'd be outdated. And uh, yeah. This, I was, I was really, uh, this looked a bit, the discs looked a bit rough when I bought them. Uh, the first disc had a few scratches and the second disc looked like it was uh, a bit rotted. But fortunately, they both played fine, so, yeah. Yeah, bargain, basically. I'll print title, two quid. And the disc played perfectly, so, yeah. Apparently there's going to be a 4K restoration of that sooner, so I hope there will be a 4K release of it within the next couple of years, because uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I would like to get that on 4K, or Blu-ray at least. Next we have the books. I'll we'll start off with uh, this book. We have um, Ghost Stories by M.R. James. M.R. James is, is an author, and this is a compilation of short stories, horror stories he wrote. Um, this is the Penguin um, English Library release. Isn't this a nice cover? Uh, I've not read any of the stories, but um, I've heard they're pretty good. I quite like these sort of gothic ghost stories. And uh, I also wanted to pick this up because um, there's a, well, there's a couple here I wanted to read. I've heard good things about them. Uh, 
Oh, Whistle and I Come to You, My Lad, which is like a very... Got turned, it was a TV movie based on that, which apparently is really scary, and I wanted to read the... I've not seen the, the TV movie, but I thought uh, I was interested in this, reading the book. And... Uh, what's it called? What's it called? Um, Casting the Runes, which is what the film Night of the Demons based on. I haven't seen Night of the Demon. I would like to get watch Night of the Demon before I read this, so I can compare them. But uh, I wanted to get it because I because um, I'm quite interested in watching Night of the Demon, and I thought it would be cool to compare to read the book, the story afterwards, and compare them. So uh, there's no sort of like extra notes or introduction; it's just the stories. But that's fine. That's fine. Wait, no, there is a. Uh, is it? Oh, not just the stories. You can see it's a bit of a crease on the back. I don't know if you can see, but there's a bit back of it's a bit creased, which. Is, Kind of annoying, but yeah, never mind. Uh, at least the, you know, there's no like pages missing or anything. Next, we have a talking of gothic horror. We have um, two copies of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Now you might be wondering why do you have two copies? Well, there are actually two different texts. There's the 18 when it was originally published in 1818, which is in this one. And then in 1831, Mary Shelley revised the text, made some changes, and that's the version most copies have. There's the Penguin Classics version. And I wanted both because I wanted to read them both and compare them. And I've, I've tried reading the book. I was reading the, I can't remember what it was, it was the 1818 text, I believe, and I tried reading the book, I think, last year during lockdown, and I got, I wasn't quite enjoying it, and I stopped about partway through, but I thought I really should finish it because it is a classic, and I should, you know, finish it and uh I thought and why not get both both copies? Um it was a different edition of the eighteen eighteen version I had, but I got rid of it and uh this one's better anyway because it has like introduction and notes and stuff. I thought why not get both and then I can read it twice. I've got an excuse to read it twice and uh so the this is the Oxford World's classic the eighteen eighteen. I don't like that cover though, but uh, yeah. So this edition includes introduction, textual note, bibliography, chron chronology, appendices, and explanatory notes. And the introduction is and notes are by Nick Groom. So yeah, that's what I like about these Oxford World Classics and Penguin Classics is they come with basically the book equivalents of DVD extras. You get like introductions and notes and extra stuff, which you know gives you more bang for your buck, really. And uh, the Penguin one, which is the 1831 version. And what's cool about this is it obviously has introduction and notes and stuff as well, but it also includes um, a fragment. What is it? It's uh, a, a fragment by Lord Byron. Uh, uh, I guess it's a story by Lord Byron. He was a friend of Mary Shelley. And it also includes The Vampire, a tale by Dr. John William Pol Polidori. Now, for those of you who don't know, there's a famous story of, like, Frankenstein was written, basically, it was Mary Shelley, her husband, Shelley, the poet, Lord Byron, and Polidori. And they were in a house, and it was a stormy night, and uh, they were telling each other ghost stories. And Mary Shelley told Frankenstein, that's where Frankenstein came from, and Polidori told The Vampire. And what's cool is they've actually included the vampire here because you know they're connected because they were they they were thought of on the same day so it's kind of cool that they included that and it also included uh uh whatever a fragment by lord byron is is it a story or a or some something it's a, something written by lord byron again was there so pretty cool so Frankenstein. Hopefully I'll actually finish it this time and read both versions. I'm pretty terrible with my books. I buy a lot of books, but I just, they sit on the shelf for ages and I never get around to reading them. The trouble is um, I like reading when I'm in the mood for it, but I'm very rarely in the mood for it. It's really annoying because I've got all these books just sitting there and it's like, I wish I would just sit and read them, but I need to be in the right mood and I rarely am, unfortunately. Especially during all this where I'm, you know, you just, uh, <laughs> you're all stressed out because of the Lockdown and everything, and uh, you know, you're too stressed to read anything. 
Next we have um, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. This was in a, I can't remember what it's called, but it was a book clearance shop, book, book store, and it was like a clearance books, and it was one pound, as you can see. And I wanted, uh, Oliver Sacks wrote, one of my favourite films is uh, Awakenings with Robin Williams and Robert De Niro, and that was based on a book by Oliver Sacks. It was, it was true, something that happened to him, and he wrote a book about it, and then they made the movie, which is a fictional version, like the character Robin, Robin Williams plays, is a fictional character, but he's based on Oliver Sacks, and I like Awakenings, and I thought, well, I'll read, you know, for a quid, I'll read one of, you know, Oliver Sacks' books, and, you know, just, you know, by the actual guy, so, yeah, it's about, um, basically, Oliver Sacks was, I think he's dead now, but uh, he was a neurologist, and uh, this is, uh, he wrote books about some of the cases he dealt with, and one of them was Awakenings, and uh, this is another one, it's, um, Case studies of people who have lost their memories. So, yeah, sound, sounded interesting. Next, we have these two books again. I mentioned before, Amazon was like having a lot of stuff on offer. And these two books are like £1.50 or something each. And they were both on my Amazon wish list. So I thought, well, let's get them. So we have a Billion Dollar Brain by Len Dayton. This is the uh, fourth and final novel featuring so it's the the if Crest file the Harry Palmer books well I say Harry Palmer the character isn't named in the books but in the movies he's called Harry Palmer Michael Caine uh, there were four books there were only three films in the sixties there were two more films made in the nineties but they weren't based on any of the books this is the fourth book it's the third film but they skipped I think it was the second book I don't know why they skipped that one but uh, yeah it was cheap and uh, I don't have the other Palmer books or any of Len Dayton's other books I have I have seen the films and uh, yeah I thought for, for cheap I'll get one of them because uh, like, uh, the Crest File of the Crest File movie I, I like I like some of the other I like the other two 60s ones and uh, yeah I'm sure I'll enjoy the book too and uh, St this is the History of the Crusades Part 1 The First Crusade by Steve Runshim basically it's a three part three volume Book series on the Crusades, and this is the first volume. I don't have parts one and two yet. Parts two and three, yeah, I will get them. Uh, I just need to, uh, obviously, yeah, I want to read this one first. Well, I'll get all three of them and I'll read them, but uh, I got this one because it was really, really cheap. So, yeah, not much to say. I'm uh, I like history, so that would be fun. Next, we have uh, I was in HMV, I think, on. Was it Saturday or something? I can't remember. It was at the weekend. And uh, in HMV, they started selling books the past over the past few years. And they have a, it was an offer if you buy two books for £6. And there is a series of books that I've been interested in reading for quite a long time. And they had the six books by the original. There's more books in the series overall, but these are the six by the original author. Because he died after the sixth one came out, and uh, all the rest were written by his son, which apparently aren't as good. But I wanted to read the first six, and HMV had all six, so I ended up getting them all for eighteen pounds. So we have uh, Frank Herbert's Dune series. So you have uh, Dune, the original, the fiftieth anniversary edition, Dune Messiah, Children of Dune. God Emperor of Dune, Heretics of Dune, and Chapel House Dune. I know they said Chapel House Dune. Chapel House is a place near where I live. That's why I got confused, but it's Chapter House Dune. Yeah. I've seen the David Lynch film of the first the first book, and I've seen the miniseries of the first book. Uh, I watched a bit of Children of Dune miniseries, but uh, yeah, those aren't very good, the miniseries. The films aren't that good. Really, I don't even like it, but I kind of watch. I'd like to watch it sometimes, even though it's not a very good film. And I'm been really excited because the Denis Villeneuve new film is going to come out, and it looks really good. And I thought I was in the mood for you know getting the Dune books, and fortunately, HMV had all six of the Frank Herbert ones. Like I say, Brian Herbert, his son, wrote quite a lot of them afterwards but they're not meant to be very good and I'm not as interested in them I don't like the idea I don't like it when 
when an author dies, someone else like writes your know, books, like you know sequels and that. I don't or prequels. Or, I don't like that. I'm like only the in terms of books. I think only the original author should write things in that universe because it's their universe. They created it. So yeah, I kind of object to it in that way. So I don't. I'm not interested in the other ones, but I have these. I can read them. I'm gonna wait till after the film first film comes out because i have this weird thing where if i read a book i can't enjoy the film because because when i read a book i'm already i'm already kind of making the film in my head i'm picturing it as a film so then when i see the film it's like oh that's not how i pictured it in my head so i can't enjoy it as much as if i just watch it so i'm gonna wait till the film comes out before i read june and then i'm gonna wait and see if they do the sequels before i read them so it'll probably be a while before i read all of these but yeah, it's fine, you know. I guess <laughs> uh, I've got plenty of other things to read in the meantime. And then uh, we have another science fiction thing, partly inspired by Dune. We have the novelization of Star Wars: A New Hope. It's credited to George Lucas. George Lucas didn't write this. Andy Foster did. Ghost wrote it, and Lucas got credit as the author. This is quite a nice hardback copy, which is done for the I think it was the fortieth anniversary. Yeah, fortieth anniversary. So. 2017 and uh, the, this novelization I wanted to read it because um, it was actually the first ever bit of Star Wars merchandise it actually came out six months before the film did which just seems outrageous now because um, you know, in the internet now if the book the novelization came out like you could just read it and it would spoil everything but this came out well before the film did, uh, and it was the first bit. Star Wars merchandise, and as a fan, I was kind of interested in it. And uh, this looked like a nice copy. And I especially, it's got my favourite... I prefer this version of the poster. There's two versions. There was this one. Uh, I can't remember. I think... It, uh, I can't remember the artist's name, but he did this one. And then... Close at the time the movie came out, the another artist did the same image, but redid it to have Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher's likenesses because this doesn't look anything like them. But it's the same image, basically. And, uh, yeah. It's got my book. Tiny. So, yeah. Haven't read that yet. Looking forward to it. I've seen the film, obviously, but I'm looking forward to reading the book. Seeing what's different. Uh, something that was kind of cool about novelizations back in the day was uh, they were based on the script rather than the finished film. So you would sometimes get deleted scenes that weren't, you know, back then when vi home video, you know, was in its infancy in the cinema. So you didn't see deleted scenes. So it was kind of cool if you read the book, you get to read read them and see, oh, there's a bit that's not the film. Now, when they release a novelization, the, the never has that. So it's just anything like that gets cut out by the editors because they're like, well, that's not in the finished film, and it's like, well, that was that's one of the only things that makes them worth reading because now it's like, well, now a film comes out like streaming or something a few months after it's in the cinema so there's no point buying the book because back then it was like you bought the book because uh, you know there wasn't video video was there wasn't around and then when it was around it was expensive you bought the book so you could experience the story again uh, now you don't have that you don't have the extra stuff that's not in the, the film so it's, it's just reading it in, in prose form which if you want to do that fine but it's just it's pointless now so yeah and uh, lastly, we have a book, another book, a comic book. We have uh, the Simpsons comic, comics, uh, Col Simpsons Col Comics Colossal Compendium Volume 2. I used to read the Simpsons comics. I've was, had was some old comics of mine in, like, the loft or something, and there were a few Simpsons issues. And uh, so I used to read these when I was a kid, and I was in, um, I think I had some, someone had given us some money or something. Uh, like... And I was in W. H. Smith, and I saw this, and I thought, "Well, I'll get this," because uh, it was about the. I think it was about the yeah, ten quid. It was ten quid, and I thought, "Well, I'll just get the you know, use the ten quid on this," because I used to love reading these. So, yeah, I love the Simpsons. I was uh, I prefer the older episodes, though. I don't think it was as good. Uh, I, I mean, I think that, well, everyone agrees <laughs> that it, it's not as good as it was at the time back in the day, like in the nineties. It's it's gone downhill. 
you know what they still make? I mean, surely they've got plenty of ep enough episodes where they could just make money from just rerunning them all the time. You know, like did the really. Like, I don't see the point. There's so many episodes you you don't need. You know, there's more, well more than enough for like syndication and streaming and that for people to watch, and for the you know the people to make money and that. So I, I just don't see the point of them still making. They're clearly running out of ideas too. So, oh, they ran out of ideas a long time ago. This is lazy now, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes this is this is a reminder of back when The Simpsons was good. So, right. <laughs> I didn't expect this video to go on so long. I can waffle on a bit, can't I? Um, yes, yeah, so you can see why I didn't want to do uh, one earlier because I had so much stuff. I had way more than this, and this is an hour and 20 minutes. So, yeah, um, probably going to uh, do these more frequently so that the videos don't end up being so long. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.